Hello everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we will be looking at our third example problem and its dynamic programming solution. Given a rectangular grid with the rows and the columns numbered 0, 1, 2, 3, and n, Pac-Man is located at the point 0, 0 in the top left corner and wants to get to location n, n in the lower right corner. Pac-Man can only move along links and can only move down or move right. Each link has an associated cost. Our goal is to find the least cost path from location 00, 0 to location NN. First, again, let's figure out if this problem has a finite number of possible solutions and if we can use a naive brute force algorithm. We notice that no matter which path to choose, the total length of the path is always 2n. Pac-Man needs to go right n times. and go down n times as well. So the path length is fixed, 2n. At each step, there are always only two options, either go down or go right. So the total possible paths will be 2 to the power of 2n. So the complexity of this brute force algorithm is to the order of 2 to the power of n. So this is an exponential algorithm. Next, let's see if we can come up with an efficient algorithm for this problem. First, we go through some observations of this problem. The path length is fixed. It is always 2n. The number of move right is also fixed, n, and so is the number of move down. In order to use dynamic programming, we need to identify a recurrence relation. So how can we define an optimal solution in terms of optimal solutions to subproblems? Using the example where there is a 4x4 grid, for Pac-Man to arrive at the location 33, there are only two options to get there, either from the point above 23 or from the point on the left 32. So we can write this. Pac-Man is a function that returns the least cost of a path getting to a specific location. There are two options, either from the point that's above or from the point that's on the left, plus the cost of getting to the destination. That's our recurrence relation. Figuring this out is the defining step of dynamic programming. The rest will become much easier. Now, there are some special cases as well. For Pac-Man to get to any position at the top edge, or at the left edge, there is in fact only one option. For instance, for Pac-Man to get to point 0, 03, it can only get there from the point 0, 02. Similarly, for Pac-Man to get to the point 20, there is only one option that's from the point 10. So the complete recurrence relation and the base cases are here. When the destination is the location 0, 0, the cost is also 0. When the destination is on the left edge, the cost of getting there is the cost of getting to the location above it, plus the cost of the link connecting the position i minus 1, 0 and i, 0. Similar idea for a destination on the top edge. For the rest of the cases, there are two options getting to the position i, j, either from above or from the left. OK, so now we have the complete recurrence relation figured out with the base cases and the special cases. Next, we want to build the solution bottom up and save the solutions to subproblems. Since now we need two variables to identify a location, we will need a two-dimensional table. Now for this example of the problem, there is a 4x4 grid, and we marked all the links with their associated costs. We create a two-dimensional list P to save the results of the subproblems. So for P00 base case, its value is 0. Then we get to the special cases, the top and the left edges. So P10 will be P00 plus the cost of 6. So that will be 6. And P20 will be P10 plus 4. That's 10. P30 is P20 plus the cost of 3. So that's 13. Similar idea 
P01 will be P00 plus the cost 1. So that's 1. And P02 will be 1 plus 5. That's 6. And P03 will be 6 plus the cost 8. So that's 14. Next, we get to P11. In order to get to the point P11, there are two options, either from P01 plus 5 or from P10 plus the cost 7. So we compute both of them. That's 1 plus 5, 6 from above, or 6 plus 7, that's 13 from left. So we know 6 has the smaller cost, so that's the value for P11, that's 6. Please pause the video and try to figure out the rest of the table using the same manner. Next, the complexity of this algorithm. We are computing one element of the table at a time. So the number of iterations is the number of elements in this 2D list. That is, the complexity of this dynamic programming algorithm is big O of the number of rows times the number of columns. So this algorithm tells us the shortest path or the lowest cost of getting to the destination. What if we want to know the detail of the solution and we want to know the exact optimal path? Now let's see if we can reconstruct an optimal solution. Recall when we fill the table for P, we know for each element which option we choose, either by a horizontal move or by a vertical move. We can in fact record that using another table, say S. S00 will be O, the origin. For all the positions on the top edge, we know the last step getting to them is a horizontal move. So they all have H. And for all the points on the left edge, the last step is always a vertical move. Now looking at S11, when we compute P11, we know the choice is from above. So the last step getting to that point is a vertical move. So we write V here. So again, the idea is we can construct this 2D table S when we are figuring out the table P. We can have both tables constructed at the same time. Once both tables are filled, we can figure out an optimal path getting to the final destination, location 3.3, by tracing back in table S. For instance, S33 has the value H. It means that the last step is a horizontal move. So we went to that point from the point S32. And then we look at the value now is V, is a vertical move. So we went there from the point above. Now we are looking at another horizontal move again, another vertical, another vertical horizontal. So that's the path we can trace back. And now we know exactly how we get to S33 from the origin S00. Constructing this table S can be added to the dynamic programming algorithm when we are constructing the table P. So constructing S is covered in its big O of NR times NC complexity. Tracing back in table S takes the same number of steps as the length of the path, nr plus nc. So it is a linear algorithm, and is not much a cost added to the original dynamic programming algorithm. Constructing a dynamic programming solution to an optimization problem may seem tricky sometimes, but keep in mind that it always involves the same steps. Please pause the video and read through the steps. Recall the three problems we solved this week and see if you can come up your DP solutions by following these steps.